Here, let's take a look at these group four problems that you have to do tax returns on. And um, uh, we're going to go through determining a filing status and any dependencies that are allowed for each one of these. So this first one, Maria Talchi, she's single. She is born in 1993, so she's obviously younger than 65 years old. Okay? She has no dependents, it says. And so when we look at the filing status, um, she's neither of the married. She's not head of household because she has no dependent. She's not qualifying widower for the same reason. So uh, she is left with being single. We're going to call her single on the tax return. Okay, and she has no dependents that would go into uh, the 2020. So if we take a look at a return, uh, this is Abigail Boxer, but if we took a look at this, we would have clicked on single. For uh, Maria, there would be nothing here in the dependency section. Okay, if we take a look at the next one, we have Hardy and Dora Knox. They're married and file a joint return. So they would be married filing joint. Okay, that would be their filing status. We could put, uh, when we do the tax return, we would click on married filing joint. When you go to put their names, Hardy can, can be first or Dora can be first. It doesn't matter. You just have to remember that whoever goes first becomes the your. So your Social Security or you. If it did like here, presidential election, a you and spouse, okay? Who's ever listed first is the you or the your. And whoever is listed second would be the, considered the spouse. It doesn't matter which way you do it. You just have to keep them straight once you do that. Now, uh, with Hardy and Dora, so they're married filing joint. They have a W-2 wages um, and uh, no other income for themselves. They do have a son named Fort. He was born in 2000, so in 2020 he is 20 years old. Okay, um, He is a dependent. He is living with them in their house. Okay? They're supporting him, but he's not a full-time student. And he makes 5200 of gross income for himself. So if we take a look at um, if we take a look at the test, you always start out with the qualifying child test. And the first part of that test is the relationship test. And he is their son, so he passes that part of the test. Um, and you get to the age test, and the age test, he is not under uh, 19, and nor is he under 24 and a full-time student. So he does not pass the age test. The second you don't pass one of those tests, you just scrap the rest of it. It's not a majority of the test pass. It's even one is not passed. And that's it. He is not a qualifying child dependent. However, they're still qualifying relative dependent. So in this case, we could take a look at that. That starts out with a relationship test, which he passes, and he's in their domicile, meaning in their house, living with them. And so that's good. There is no age test there. However, there is a test that said, did the, um, did the person make less than $4,300? Well, he made $5,200. So he made too much money, and so he cannot pass that test, and immediately 
he is not a qualified relative dependent either. He is not a dependent. Okay, so he would fill out his own tax return um, as his own self, and of course he would show his 5200 Regardless of if he's there dependent or not, he would still have to file uh, for this 5200 if he uh, had any withholding and he wants his refund back. Okay, um, so he is neither kind of dependent. What if he'd only made 4200 instead of 5200? 4200 is less than 4300. So he would have passed that part of the test and he passes all the other part of the test, assuming he's a U.S. citizen, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then he would be able to be an other, um, an other dependent. He's not a qualifying child dependent, okay, because of the age test, but he would be an other. So here where we put um, Helen, we would have put Fort and his social security number that he's their son. He's not less than 17, so we would not check that off, but we could check off this credit for other dependents, and uh, Hardy and Dora Knox would have got $500 credit um, because of having four as a dependent. So um, that may be something parents should be considering as their kid is going out making money. Of course, you want the kid to be learn to be responsible and make money, but that extra thousand dollars that he made um, then caused him not to be a dependent. <clears throat> um, okay, let's go down to Abigail. Okay, she has Helen, which is an 18-year-old daughter who is dependent and living with her mother. Okay, and so if I look at qualifying child, qualifying child, um, the daughter is the relationship part. The qualifying child tests age says, did um, Helen, is Helen uh, under 19? And yes, Helen is under 19. So she passes the age test. Did Helen make at least half of her own support? No, she didn't make any money, so she's good there. And she's a U.S. citizen and all that stuff, and she lives at least half the year with her mother. So she passes all the tests to be a qualifying child, okay? Now, you have to be separate about child tax credit and qualifying child. Qualifying child, Helen is a qualifying child dependent, and so we would put all her information. But when it comes to the credit, just uh, just like any other dependent that's uh, 17 or older, she would only get, uh, Abby would only get the extra $500 credit for Helen. If Helen was only 16, then she would check off this child tax credit instead of this other one. You can only check off one. And she would get $2,000 credit um, instead of the 500. Okay, uh, that, uh, that concludes our chapter one, part four, homework, as, um, as far as filing status and dependency.